I'll introduce myself first. My name is Reverend Brian Richards, and uh, collectively with my family, we have the Faith Restoration Church. Um, we are part of the World Faith Movement, and there are many churches around across the world uh, that are World of Faith. Uh, so each assembly that we start, you know, we start churches, assembly, and they have a different name. So this at Plumpton, Sydney, Australia, we are the Apostolic Faith, Faith Restoration, Restoration Church. Church. Apostolic Faith Restoration Church. How about that? Welcome okay. Facebook friends. So we welcome our Facebook friends and today we have something special because we've been inspired by lots of different things which I'll talk about after. But right now, the, we're going to speak about the uh, Psalm 91. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Lord, we just thank you for your presence here today. We know, Lord, that when we speak your word and when uh, the anointing comes on your word, as we preach your word, we know this is the presence of God. For when two or three gather together in the name of the Lord, then your presence is with us. You're with us, Lord God. And you're with us in spirit, and you're with us with your word, and you give confirmation. For in the apostles of old, there was many signs and wonders following the preaching of God's word. And Lord, we pray for the inner witness to come out and be a witness unto many souls. Bring many souls unto glory. Bring many souls to be saved. Bring many people that have been broken to be mended, to be healed, and to have true salvation. Lord, we pray for a life-changing experience through knowing Jesus and the Word are one. We welcome our Facebook friends. 
those that are local and as I send out the link to my mailing list uh, there will be many souls being saved there will be many people that will be changed by the word of God there's many that have been in religion like I was in religion and when I receive revelation knowledge of the word of God I receive a life changing experience through knowing Jesus and the word are one can you say that with me Jesus and the word are one Jesus and the word are one say it again Jesus, Jesus and, and the, the word, word are, are one. one in the beginning was the word the word was with God the word was God and that same word became flesh and dwelled among us that we know of Jesus Christ so without the word we have not the anointing without preaching the word of God the anointing the anointing of God would not come what is the anointing the anointing of God is what we talk about in the word that is Christ Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Means the anointing of God within. <coughs> Excuse me. So Christ means the anointed one and his anointing. And Christ is not Jesus' second name. We wrote a book called Are You in Christ? It's always missing what I wanted. Can you give me the book? Are you in Christ? This book is free, electronic download to all those on my mailing list. And if you would like a physical book like this one, which we are ministering to you through this book. And uh, I wrote this book a, a little while ago now, it's not very old, but <coughs> it, it's been uh, revised and touched up and all that. And now it, I believe it's uh, as good as it's going to get. And God anointing is definitely on this book. Um, when I wrote it, it's, you know, sometimes we can preach out of a revelation that is much higher than where we're at which is not hard to do <laughs> but sometimes we even write down words in a book like this that I haven't arrived yet you know but if we don't do that if we don't stretch out in faith far beyond who we are now then we'll never become what God says we are in the word it says that we are already not some time to come or you know but we are now sons of God and uh, all creation in Romans 8 says all creation grown us until now for the manifestation of sons of God now the sons of God is uh, when he says you are sons of God he's talking about the we are specia, which is the, the the full manifestation of the son of God but if we don't call those things that be not as though they are already then we never will become now that's foreign to some people in English language but you see we have to call those things that be not as though they are already done like when you put cabbage seeds in your garden, they are cabbage when you put them in. What do you put in there? Put in cabbage. Because you believe it, because you know it's a seed that will grow into a cabbage. But it's just as much as a cabbage in the seed that it is in full life, full grown. You understand that? Mm -hmm. And so God speaks to us as a seed as already fully grown. You understand? And that's why he says, you call those things, but be not as though they are already. So the seed, we call it cabbage. Even though it's a seed, we call it cabbage. See? 
not fully grown, but when it's grown, you can eat it. So when we're fully grown, we can be not only with the Lord, but working as the Lord works through us. In the meantime, we take that step of faith and we, we say things in Jesus' name. And the, the anointing of God will back us up. You know, he said many signs and wonders follow the preaching of God's word. Well, it does then with the apostles as it is now with us. And this book will teach you how to do that. This book will prepare your heart to receive the anointing of God. And that, are you in Christ? Lots of people, they say yes, but they don't even know what Christ is yet. See? So, are you in Christ? You may be born again, but you're not really in Christ yet until you fully understand how Christ or how the anointing will work for you. Amen? Amen. So, this will help you. And I want to give it freely to anyone is on my mailing list but if you want the hard copy like this which is uh, approximately how many pages uh, not quite 200 pages all right uh, uh, but it, it's well worth the I think 19 dollars that you pay that's Australian um, delivered to your house anywhere you want to be, uh, I think $20, you yeah. know, so look at a $20 book, but it's going to change not only your life, but many lives that you will talk to. Okay, so uh, we're going to get Joshua to read first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I sense the presence of God, I, I sense that I've said enough to introduce ourselves. Eleanette is my wife, she's going to come and sing, and uh, Joshua is going to read. We're going to have the reading first, I think, today, and then we're going to sing afterwards. Thank you, Joshua. Hello, my name is Joshua Brown Richards. Today I'm going to be reading from the Living Bible in Psalm 19. If you'd like to subscribe. 91. 91, sorry. 91. Um, if you'd like to subscribe to that mailing list, you can go to rarefriendrichards.com.au um, Make sure to like, comment and subscribe if you're on Vimeo, Daily Motion or whatever. If you're on YouTube, after subscribing, press the notification bell and you'll be notified of every time we upload a video. Psalm 91, The Living Bible <laughs> We live within the shadow of the Almighty, sheltered by the God who is above all gods. This, is I, this I declare, that he alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I am trusting him. For he rescues you from every trap and protects you from the fateful plague. He will shield you with his wings. They will shelter you. His faithful promises are your armor. Now you don't need to be afraid of the dark anymore, nor the fear the dangers of the day, nor dread the plagues of darkness, nor disasters in the morning. Though a thousand fall at my side, though, thousand, though ten thousand are dying around me, the evil will not touch me. I will see how the wicked are punished, but I will not share it. For Jehovah is my refuge. I choose the God above all gods to shelter me. How then can evil overtake me or any plague come near? For he orders his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will steady you with their hands to keep you from stumbling against the rocks on the trail. You can safely meet a lion or step on poisonous snakes, yes, even trample them beneath your feet. For the Lord says, because he loves me, I will rescue him. I will make him great because he trusts in my name. When he calls on me, I will answer. I will be with him in trouble and rescue him and honor him. I will satisfy him with a full life and give him my salvation. That will not come back Today to sing a song, His Eye is on a Sparrow. This song helped me to understand that if God take time out to provide and care for a bird, 
I know he'll watch over me for the rest of my days. He's watching us. He never leaves us. He's always watching wherever we go. In Joshua 1, 9, it says, Be courageous, be strong. Do not be afraid. I will be with you wherever you go. I just want to 
to read a couple of scriptures uh, to you that re refer to uh, where I believe we are today in the, the time frame of, of God and, uh, and that we can protect ourselves with our faith. It's our faith that will make us whole. You know that many times Jesus prayed for people and said, your faith has made you whole. See, it wasn't totally just Jesus working and healing the sick. <clears throat> it was um, your faith makes you whole today because you believe the word of God. Those other men of God that I've seen work in healing, they say, they ask. And as Jesus asked, he says, you believe I can do this? They say, yeah, yeah, you believe, yes. And, uh, and so it is believing that you can receive. It's, uh, it's not just believing that uh, Jesus is doing the work. He is doing the work, but if you don't believe that it's for you and that you personally can receive, then sometimes you won't, you know. That's why Jesus said, it's your faith that's made you whole. Uh, he said to the woman with the issue of blood, there was a woman with the issue of blood that uh, couldn't stop. You know, I think it's a miracle. I'm, by the way, I'm not against women. Uh, you know, I uh, I love women. I'm married to one, and uh, I see the miracles that women do every day. They, there's always a woman that's having a child. There's always a woman that um, has. Uh, an issue of blood like this woman that is mentioned in the Bible and uh, if the blood didn't stop they would be in trouble well here was a woman who had an issue of blood that didn't stop and she was in trouble without a miracle from God she would have just died and so you know they cast this woman out of the, the city because she was unclean she had this issue of blood that wouldn't stop and so they cast her out so in them days you have to go like a leper the lepers was out in one place and then people with sickness out in another place you know used out of the the city uh, out the presence of people uh, and Jerusalem was a, a, was a, a city full of wholeness whole people and if you had anything wrong, you was cast out. So this woman was cast out, but she heard Jesus was coming to town, and that uh, she knew that if she could even touch the enemy, just the, the the hemline of his garment, you know, she thought, well, if I could just get my hand on his clothing, even uh, I know I'm, I'll get close enough, I'm going to get healed. She had a revelation, I think, were, you know. She had an idea that there was something in him that would come oozing out over her and she would get healed. That was her faith. That was she believed. And so she fought her way through the crowd. And when she got to Jesus, she just reached out and touched his garment. And the power of God that was in Jesus came unto her and she got healed. And Jesus knew that some the anointing had been released out of his body. And he turned and says, Who touched me? There was lots of people touching him, you know, like by accident or you know, shoulder shoulder push through and that sort of thing. But somebody touched him in faith and he knew Somebody touched him and the power oozed out into this woman and she got healed. So that's why we ask people 
when we want to pray for people and people want to get healed and we pray for them. Sometimes we ask them and say, do you believe that this, that I can do this? Yeah. Do you believe that you're going to be healed? And they say yes. And if they say yes, they, they're saying yes to Jesus, not to the man. You see, I really dislike very much people say that, well, he's got a gift of healing, this man. Or this man's got a gift of this, a gift of that. Yeah. And there are gifts of healing, gifts of prophecy, and many, you know, gifts. But we must be seeking the giver of the gift, not the gift itself. And not a man that moves in that particular gift. The man is nothing without Jesus. None of us are anything without Jesus. You know, and without the anointing, we can pray all we like, and we can preach all we like, and we can do things mechanically, like religiously, and it's not going to make a hill of beans, no one's going to get healed, no one's going to get saved, nothing's going to happen. It's just a religious uh, thing that we're following, you know. And I used to belong to a religious church when I was younger, and I realized Without the anointing of God, we, we're just playing church. And I got fed up, I got sick of playing church, and I left the church for a while. And I came back, because I always loved God, I always believed in God. I came back to church, and I received the Holy Spirit. I received the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And I knew that something in me had changed and I could believe God for anything. And since that day, I've allowed people to pray for me and I have asked for prayer of different men of God. Uh, but I always remember that it's Jesus who does the work, not this man. And it's the anointing that does the work, not not. This man, he can preach all he likes. If he thinks he's got something, for, you know, that he can use, if he thinks he's got something, you know, then he's missed it by a country mile. Because we got nothing. Without God, we got nothing. The fact is, we're not without him. We are with him. We're working together with him. We're ambassadors for Christ. Ambassadors. For the anointing you see some people say ambassadors for Christ mean Jesus Christ doesn't mean that you know you can be ambassador for Australia doesn't mean that you you know you, you, without the authority without the permission from the country you're an ambassador for nobody you know what I mean so we got the permission of God, we got the anointing from God, and Jesus says, go ye, you, in my name you go, in my name you go, in my name you go, see, not in Brian Richard's name, but in Jesus' name. I come to you today in Jesus' name. I come to you today in Jesus' authority. I come to you today with the word of God of what Jesus said, not what I said. I mean, Jesus said it, I agree with it, and that's the end of it, you know. But if we don't agree with what Jesus says, and we're doing our own thing, nothing happens. And people don't get healed, and, you know, the ones that get saved, they go away without any revelation of the anointing. So it's the anointing of God today that causes prophecy to come to pass. The word of God is prophecy. And this is how it works. If I give you a word today, which is futuristic word, that's a word of wisdom. If I give you a word today that is line upon line scripture, then that is prophecy. If I 
have a word of knowledge, then it would be that uh, you, I have a word of knowledge that you need healing. I have a word of knowledge that right now there's people so fearful of the COVID-19 that they're trying, you know, they, they're so fearful of it, they're bringing it actually upon themselves. Fear attracts attack. This is what's wrong with this COVID-19 scenario, and that's what it is. What you fear the most will come upon you because the fear is a spirit that causes you to be under attack. Yeah. If what you fear the most will attract you, attracting it to you. But if you're in faith in God's word that by the stripes of Jesus I am healed. The word of God says I am healed. Even though you, you might be sick in your body right now and you're saying, well, I'm not healed, I'm, I'm sick. But if you call those things that be not as though they are, the word of God says, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. For the word of God is life to me and health and healing to all my flesh, all my bones and sinews and muscles. Be totally restored right now in Jesus' name. And you're speaking the word of God, you believe that you're receiving that word, you receive a life changing experience through knowing Jesus and the word of one, and that by his stripes, by every lash and bruise that he took on the way to the cross, paid the price for your healing today. And if you can believe that, you could be healed right now. And if you believe, that Jesus was put on the cross, then you're on the way to salvation. For with the heart, man believes on the cross, you know, believes on Jesus, that he died on the cross and rose again from the dead. And if you say that out of your mouth and you ask Jesus to come and be your Lord and Savior, that is Romans chapter 10 and verses 9 and 10. That if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus rose again from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and by your confession, what you say about it, is made unto salvation. So salvation and healing come together in one package for you to receive today. But I want you to receive much more than that. I want you to receive a life-changing experience and you become a brand new creation, a brand new species of being that never lived before. And the only way to do this is to wash away the old and partake of the new. And uh, the Bible explains that you die in the waters of baptism and rise up in a newness of life in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 6. And in Acts 19, as Paul and Apollos going through Ephesus, they come across a bunch of people and they congratulate them that they received Jesus, that they were born again. And he said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said, ha ha. <laughs> well, you know, we not so much heard there be any Holy Ghost. We don't know about the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. He said, well, straight away he related it to water baptism and said, Whose name or what name was you baptized in? And they said, well, we were baptized according to John the Baptist. Oh, so you can't now, anybody who's baptized, you can't say they're not saved. Or they're not born again. They are born again. 
But to receive the Holy Ghost in Acts 19, it's, it, 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 the Apostle Paul said very clearly, it says, to receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, you have to be baptized in Jesus' name. These people had already been baptized. But he says, now you need to be baptized in Jesus' name to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> oh, hey, the Holy Ghost, that's what we want. And I was 33 years old, being in a religious church, I knew how to read and write uh, Latin. A bell ringer, woohoo, you know, a high flyer. But it's all religious stuff. There was no power of the Holy Ghost in it. But when I heard this and I says yes to the Holy Spirit and I got baptized in water, baptized in Jesus' name, baptized in the Holy Ghost, I rose up in the newness of life in Christ Jesus with the power of God. I knew that I was saved. I could have been talked out of it before, but now I got this power working in me. I knew I had the power to overcome the things that had held me bound for years. The principalities and the powers and the rulers of darkness held me bound for years. I was only just thinking about this last night, actually I woke up in the morning thinking about it. When I was a child, like my son's age, I used to have a voice talking to me <laughs> all the time. I used to deny it. I used to, you know, just cast it down because the Bible says cast down every vain and evil imagination. I used to cast it down and it, it would go away, but it would come back. And many times with a group of people, I'd hear this voice saying, do this, do that. And it was always daring me to do something that is evil, you know. And, uh, so, you know, some of the things I can't tell you all because it's, 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 it's bad, really bad. But other things, there was one particular time that was with a group of people and uh, there was these, it was in Janola and Caves actually. Janola and Caves had all these crystals hanging down from the inside of the cave and uh, somebody kicked a stone on the floor, on the ground, on the pathway and uh, you know, I picked up the stone to throw it away, throw it to one side so nobody would kick it. And this voice told me, throw it at these crystals if you can hit it. And I did. And I hit one of these crystals and come down. It could have killed somebody, but it missed everybody. You know? But uh, that was just one of the times, many times, that I had this voice telling me to do evil things. And, uh, you know, at 33 years old, I was almost suicidal than what I was, suicidal, you know. And uh, I had the voice telling me how to get rid of myself. But instead of that, I had this preacher man. He's only a young man, about the same age as me. And he was a preacher man saying, give your life to Jesus. Don't, don't take your life, but give it to Jesus. Let him work through you. Let him have your life. And, you know, I heard the expression saying, when are you going to allow Jesus Christ to live his life through you? I had that revelation. Man, oh man. You know, I thought to myself, how can Jesus live his life through me? You know, and it bothered me for a while. I actually went from at, at, after that day. I had a, a zeal to learn all I can about the Word of God. So I went to Bible college for two years, not to enter into ministry or to do anything like that. My purpose was to 
learn about this word of God and who Jesus really is. And to my amazement, I was like a container with all containers, you know. And depends on how much rubbish you got in that container to get rid of. You know? If you got a lot of rubbish, then it's got to go. And the only way to get it to go is put something else in it in replace of it. <clears throat> so there was me, a container with this voice, this demonic voice it was. I found out, I learned later, that that voice was a demonic voice, it was a demon that had to go. And I had many people pray, many people cast out devils, he wouldn't go, because he knew that these were just religious folk. But when this man, who will remain nameless, but he knows who he is if he's listening to this, when this man said that, you know, when are you going to allow Jesus to live his life through you? I thought, well, how do you do that, you know? And he prayed for me, baptized me in Jesus' name, and I was starting to receive the word of God as an empty container because that voice wasn't there 24 hours a day. It was... He came at the most unusual times. And you know, I had that voice come while I was in Bible college and it actually went, pulled my face. Like that. I felt it go, you know. And it actually came out of my mouth. This demonic thing came out of my mouth and it never come back anymore because I've replaced the place where that demon spirit was, I replaced it with the word of God. And that's what we have to do. That's how we, that's the best way to get the deliverance is not lay hands on the sick and cast out the demons. The best way to get healed and delivered from anything is to put in the word of God. You're a container, you put in the word of God and you get delivered from any evil. All evil spirits leave when Jesus is there in place. Hallelujah. And that's when you can use 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4 it says, Greater is he that liveth in me than he that is of the world. Say that with me. Greater is he, Greater is he that's living in me than he that is of the world. You see, he that is of the world is of the devil. What did you say? Don't you know that the God of this world is the devil? Oh, that's... Now, all the religious people that would be throwing stones, ready to throw stones at me now. But if you look in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4, you'll see that the God of this world wants to blind your mind and stop you from seeing the light of the glorious gospel. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4 says, The God of this world has blinded the eyes to stop them from seeing the light of the glorious gospel. That's not the God we serve, so it must be the devil, the God of the world. But we serve the Holy One of Israel, who has risen into heavenly places. And if you receive him, he'll come down from heaven and enter your heart. Your heart, not your blood pump, the heart, this heart, the middle spirit of you. The same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead dwell in you. Dwell in you, yeah, the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead. Dwell in you, dwell in you. He shall quicken your mortal body. He dwells in you, he dwells in you. He shall quicken your mortal body. The same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead. 
dwells in you. Hallelujah. That's the word of God. The same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead dwells within you when you ask him to come in and be your Lord and Savior. You ask him to come in and give you the Pentecostal experience of baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of talking in tongues so you can cast out demons and speak with new tongues and when you lay hands on the sick they do recover. Acts 19, you read it from 1 to about 10, 9 and 10. It says that these people received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and some prophesied and some laid hands on the sick and they re recovered and they cast out demons in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! Glory to God! This is the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the ambassador who you stand for. Amen? Amen. See? And you're ambassador for the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? It says in Timothy that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. All right. So where are we now then on God's time clock? We see all these uh, pestilence and uh, uh, all the things that are evil things that are happening in, in, around us, uh, murders and, uh, you know, um, somebody stabbed their wife to death, so, somebody killed their mother and father, you know, killed both of them, you know. One person out of a whole family killed the whole family and, he, and, and he's asking for leniency. He says he didn't remember doing it. You know, there's all kinds of demonic things that are happening around us. Then there's plagues, COVID-19. You know, all of these things are mentioned in the Bible. And uh, there's difference of opinions right now amongst the body of Christ, amongst the people of God, amongst preachers that should know better. Australia is unique to all the world in some ways, and, and yet it's the same things that are happening around the world. But Australia is unique in that it is diverse, so diverse that there's every nation in the world living here. You know, you can take a person from just about every, every nation in the world and they live here. And so what makes Australia great is that it is unity in diversity. Because you can't come to Australia unless you and live here. You can't come here and live here unless you are prepared to live the lifestyle of, of obeying the rules of the country. And uh, so the ruling of the country is that we, we don't have respect of persons, that we're not racist, uh, no racism, uh, and we don't have respect of persons, and we don't uh, cause division amongst places where there is unity. And so therefore, unity in diversity is the the essence of Australia. Guess what? It says in Psalm 133 that God will bless brethren that dwell together in unity. Isn't that wonderful? God will bless brethren that dwell together in unity. Now how do we live in unity if we're so diverse in our believing? Well, that's very simple. You take the, the foundations and you start from there. You start from Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. Then you born again. Then you get baptized in the Holy Ghost. You receive the Holy Spirit. 
then you move in the gifts of the Holy Spirit to cast out the devil and Jesus will manifest himself in your midst, in your congregations, in your churches, in your homes. And if your home is not right, then the church won't be right either. Because the church begins in the home. It started in the home in the beginning and it still works. The Holy Spirit still works within the, the families and the home. And we come like this. This is another book of mine. We start like this, Wild Horse. Huh? Wild Horses. The title of this book is called Will You Be a Horse for God? Because if you come to Jesus like a wild horse, like that, and prepare to be disciplined, disciple the Lord Jesus Christ and become like that, you see, harness a horse with a, with a, what do you call it, a harness on it, and you can ride a horse. You can do something with a horse like that. You can do nothing with a wild horse like that. You can admire it and say, yeah, that'd be fantastic if I could ride that horse. But if you, when you ride the horse and you get it to go left, right, you know, then you can do something with it. This workhorse, good Australian stock horse. And so, you know, this is how God wants us to be. He wants us in our wildness and our diversities wants us to come together in unity so he can bless us so he can use us so he can work through us so my question for you today is when are you going to allow jesus christ to live his life through you and if you are prepared to do that then God is prepared to bless you on a continual basis. He will bless unity in diversity. Because in Psalm 133, he says, I will bless the brethren that dwell together in unity. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that we all become one overnight. But that is our vision that we become one in Christ. That's our vision. There'll be one in Christ. Not a church called one in Christ, because some people make a denomination of it, one in Christ, you know. No. To be one in the anointing, the same anointing, the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead dwell in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is that right? Amen. Glory to God, my wife is in put a sign here that I can see saying, smile! Hallelujah. You know, we can smile and we can shout and we can sing because we've got something to shout about. we got something to sing about. we got Jesus living on the inside of us. Hallelujah! The same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead dwells within me. Now, I'm going to tell you where we're at at God's time clock. In Revelations chapter now, you've never heard me preach out of Revelations because the, the thing is, with the book of Revelations, there's so many different opinions of what the Word of God is saying when it comes to Revelations. Now, there's nowhere in the Bible, you know, uh, Ephesians 4.11 says, I call apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers to do the work of the ministry for the edifying of the saints. That means the building up of the saints to do the work of the ministry. So, you know, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor and teacher are not called to, to do the work of the ministry. They're called to build up the church to do the work of the ministry. Do you understand that? So if anybody's in ministry, it's you, not me. Yeah. I might be a prophet and I can predict, call things into being even sometimes. But I do it in obedience to God, to what he's showing me. 
And so, we're all in Christ, in the same anointing, so therefore what I say should be bearing witness if you have the same spirit. It should be bearing witness. It shouldn't be, oh, wow, this is new, and, uh, you know, no, your spirit and my spirit should be in a, already in unity, and when I say things, so, oh, yes, I can identify with that. So you identify with what I'm saying as being the word of truth. Okay. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, if, if you can rightly divide the word of truth, then you can wrongly divide the word of truth also. What, how do you know the difference? By the power of the Holy Spirit. That's how you know the difference. Hallelujah. So if you need, if you need the power of the Holy Spirit today, I will pray that you will receive the anointing for water baptism in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord God, that the people with the sound of my voice they sense the conviction of the power of the Holy Spirit and those that are not baptized in Jesus name they would become baptized in Jesus name and they receive gifts of the Holy Spirit to the edifying of the saints so they can edify the saints of God and be a builder of the church Hallelujah. that's how the church gets built not by one man but by every man we're all called into the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ not necessarily all preachers but all called to be a witness for Jesus Christ Hallelujah. and lots of people when they come to church it's not the minister that they take full notice of it's their friends that says you should come with me to church and if what well, it's changed my life it's going to change your life made you fall in love with jesus you, you fall in love with jesus you see the witness that we are told to do is to be a witness not to witness but to be a witness in other words if you are saying things that you haven't got in your life you're a bad witness so if you're a good witness, people will come to church or come to hear the Word of God, regardless whether it's a church or in a house or wherever. They'll come and get born again, get saved, get healed. Okay, so <clears throat> because of the times and the seasons, I believe we can identify with uh, Re Revelations chapter 12 and verse 3. It says, There appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head was a crown of twelve stars. She being the... She being with child cried travailing in birth and pained to be delivered and there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold the great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns seven crowns upon his head and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them down to earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule over the nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up into God and in his, to his throne. 
The woman fled into the wilderness where she had place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand and two hundred and three score days which we know together as three and a half years. And there was a war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his, and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the dragon was cast out, and the old serpent called the devil, right, and Satan, so it's very clear there. So the old serpent, which was called the devil, and Satan, which is delivered the whole world, he was cast out into the earth. See that? That's when he became the god of the world, god of the earth. <clears throat> and his angels was cast out with him. So the third of the angels was cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength. Can you say that? Now is come salvation and strength. And the kingdom of God and the power of Christ for the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which casteth them before our God day and night and verse 11 and they overcome him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony and they loved their lives and they loved not their lives unto death therefore rejoice ye heavens and you that dwell in them woe to the inhabitants of the earth <coughs> sorry Woe to the evidence of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has but a short time. I'm going to pause there, because that's where I believe we're at. What we're seeing now in the world today as a testimony of God, as the Word of God, it says, when the dragon saw that he was cast out of the earth, he persecuted the woman, the woman is the church, right? He persecuted the church, which brought forth a man child. Right? But the reason why we're going through so much tribulation and, and trouble right now is because of verse 13 when the dragon saw that he was cast out of the earth he persecuted the woman which brought forth a man child the reason why is because of verse 12 where it says woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea for he for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath the devil's that mad the devil's angry because he knows his time is short yeah? because he knows that he has but a short time he knows his time is short so that's why we're seeing many many evils that are in the world but it says that we shall overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And the, sea, the, the, the serpent, which is the devil, uh, will be cast uh, down. Because the, the, the chapter finishes by saying that the dragon was wrath with the woman or the church. You know? It was wrath with the woman and went to make war with the remnant 
of her seed, which is us, and went to war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Is that you or not? See, we have this testimony that we can overcome by the blood of the Lamb. The word of our testimony is the word of God. See, it's the word of God that will go forth with power and authority. Isaiah 55 says, they will go forth and uh, we, it will not return void. It will not return void or empty. It will accomplish that which God pleases. Hallelujah. So we do everything in Jesus' name. We speak his word and we expect his word to do the work. Yeah? God's word will do the work. It will do the fighting for us. As he was in Old Testament days when God worked for them, he worked for us today. But it's all spiritual. It's nothing. We don't fight flesh and blood or principalities and powers is what we fight. We do not fight flesh and blood. We don't have to make war with people, with countries or whatever. We can speak the word of God. <clears throat> we speak in Jesus' name. And the word will accomplish which God pleases. And so, there's a warning though with this, because there are many prophets that are rising up. God is raised up a prophet, but the devil raises up ten. You know what I mean? And uh, how do you know the false prophet? is because they will teach you lies. The Lord says, be the head and not the tail. The head is Jesus Christ. The tail is the devil. And if you are of the tail, then you'll speak lies. He is the tail in Revelation 6, 16, 13, 14, talk about the prophecies which are correct or, or they're not correct. You decide. But this is the time that you decide who is a prophet and who he isn't. And you'll know them by the fruit. you know them by the, the words that they speak, whether they come to pass or not. Okay, so uh, I'll finish with uh, Isaiah 9. And verse 5 it says, For a little, for every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garment rolled in blood, but this shall be the burning of the fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. We have a song that goes with that. Appreciate it if you can get it. However, verse 7 says, And the increase of his government of peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. The Prince of Peace. The increase of the government of peace shall be to no end. And the throne of David and upon the kingdom to order it. In Acts 15 it says, God will restore again the tabernacles of David. King David 
many years before Jesus came, he had a revelation that, you know, it was only the king and the priest could go into the holiest of holies in the tent where the glory seat was, mercy seat. They present the blood of bulls and goats. And he had a, King David have a revelation that one day is coming. One day is coming where this tabernacle will be the tabernacle of men. That this tabernacle of old will be the tabernacle of men. That the not only kings and priests shall go into the holies of holies, but whosoever shall believe and call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. That's in, the, in Acts 15. It talks about that God will restore again the tabernacles of David and the tabernacles of God will be with men. Hallelujah. That's today, folks. That's today. And so I want us to finish with Hebrews 4.16 says, Come boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy and find grace to help of a time of need. Heavenly Father, we call upon you right now to confirm this word to every believer, Lord God. And as we call upon you, Lord God, we ask you for the power of the Holy Spirit, that we can overcome every principality, every power, every seducing spirit. We cast down right now in Jesus' name. We render them harmless and ineffective against us in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, in Jesus' name. Can you say amen, somebody? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come boldly to the throne of Christ. In Jesus' name. His name is called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. I forget how that song goes. His name I worship you, Almighty God. for those people that need healing right now. I pray that you can reach forth in faith. In Romans chapter 1 and verse 11 it says, I long to be with you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that you be established. 
I pray that I can impart unto you the anointing of healing and deliverance, the anointing of grace, the anointing that will bring people to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Evangelism. Oh, yes. The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher be unto you as much as you can believe. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for healing and deliverance. I pray that by the stripes of Jesus you be healed. For the word of God be life to you and health to all your flesh, bones, sinews, muscles. Be restored right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, that we break the power of infirmities. We break the power of demonic influence. We thank you, Lord, for your anointing to be strong within people that will receive in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Every praise is to our God. Every worship that we want to call. 